Meet Lox. He's one of the rarest axolotl morphs in the world. But what makes him so special? And what's a morph? Well, today we're going to cover everything you need to know about current axolotl morphs in 2023. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel, guys and girls. My name is Tim. Her name is still Erica, and today we're going to be going over axolotl morphs. Let's get into it. If you're new to the axolotl community, you've probably seen quite a few axolotl colors, types floating around, and today we're going to go over the basics of just the genetics of these morphs, what they look like, and how you can get them. First and foremost, what is a morph? A morph is a combination of chromatophores. What are chromatophores? They're cells that produce color. In most mammals, um, in humans in particular, we only have one chromatophore, and that is the chromatophore that produces melanin, um, which makes our skins darker, browns, blacks, and uh, not just humans, but other animals. In most reptiles and amphibians, they actually have three chromatophores. The first is melanophores, which produce the dark or brown pigment in their skin. Uh, the second is xanthophores, which usually show the yellow pigments in their skin, but also can sometimes be orange or red. And the last one is iridophores. Iridophores actually reflect light and they can come in a shiny gold or silver color in axolotls. Most known morphs in axolotls are recessive. That just means that each parent gave the recessive allele to the offspring. So let's go over some common morphs in axolotls. Before we get into the recessive morphs in axolotls, let's talk about the wild type. This is what you could consider like the base form axolotl. Um, it is just the natural wild type normal axolotl. They have all three chromatophores, so they produce a combination of greens, blacks, yellows, browns, um, and shiny speckled spots from the iridophores. In normal type or wild type axolotls, they will usually have purple or gray gills, and they will have a shiny gold ring around their black eyes. And there is one special wild type to go over. It is called the Enigma axolotl. And what this is, is it is a dark gray axolotl with a camouflage looking green and gold pattern on its body. And in some light, it shines a certain way, it shows up as green, and in the other light, uh, it shows up as gold. And then you'll see typically a white underbody. So it'll be very white on the bottom, dark gray with a camouflage of green and gold. And this, what makes this so rare is there's only been one in known in existence that was bred. And at this point, nobody's been able to replicate this particular morph. So that's what makes this wild type incredibly rare. But we just wanted to touch on it. it there's not very much known about it as there's only been one ever produced. So in the future, hopefully we can see this morph come out and then we can understand more about it and maybe get more of those morphs out in the public. All right, and so the next morph that we're gonna go over is albinism. And what that is, is it's the lack of production of melanophores. And so that can leave the axolotl being white or translucent with red or clear eyes. Albinism in axolotls is similar to humans, but remember, axolotls have three chromatophores so what that means is there's a couple of different types of albinism, one being the golden albino, two being the white albino, and you could kind of count number three, but the copper axolotl. Golden albinos lack melanophores, but they have xanthophores and iridophores. What that means is that they cannot produce black or brown pigments, um, but they can produce yellow, and then shiny pigments, which often show as silver. Next is the white albino. They lack melanophores and xanthophores, but they do have iridophores that are mostly located on their gills. All right, next up is coppers. And so this is where the technicality comes in. They do produce melanin, but it's not oxidized properly. So it comes out as a brown color. 
but they do have a higher production of xanthophores. So that's where you get the copper, the kind of yellow brown mixture with the freckles. All right, now that we've covered albinism, let's talk about the other morphs you might see in the market. First and foremost, you may see leucistic. Leucistic is very similar to albinos. Um, they do have melanophores, they just don't fully develop that dark pigmentation in their skin. They often come in a pale or white color as well, but the best way to um, decipher between an albino and a leucistic is through their eyes. Because leucistics do actually have melanophores, they will have black eyes, where in albinos, they will have red or clear eyes because they can't produce that black color. You may also see some axolotls on the market that are described as dirty leucistics. And this just means that they have patches of black spots where they were able to fully develop, usually over time as they grow older. Um, and they're more commonly found on their face and their neck area. But if you see this, it's just a descriptor. It just means a leucistic that has a speckled face or even body. On the opposite end of the spectrum, we have melanoids. Melanoids have an increased productivity of melanin. They typically have a very dark body and can almost look completely black. They also have a decreased production in xanthophores, which means they won't have as many yellow pigmentations on their skin. The best way to identify a melanoid um, as opposed to like just a normal type is to look in their eyes if you see a shiny gold ring around their pupil, that is not a melanoid. Melanoids will not have the shiny ring in their, their eyes. Next up, we have exanthic, which is kind of similar to melanoids. They don't produce xanthophores. They don't produce iridophores. They don't have an increased production in melanophores, but that is the only pigmentation that you will see. So they will often come in kind of like a dark gray or purple color. And the last common morph that we're going to talk about is high iridophores. These aren't necessarily a new gene, they're, they're what's considered polygenic, which is where breeders will take axolotls with high iridophores, aka they're super shiny, they have a lot of golds and silvers, and they will breed them together to try and create axolotls with high iridophores. Alright, so the next one is mosaic slash chimera. And so what that is, is whenever two axolotls are born, they're fused together as embryos. And so it shows both phenotypes from both of those embryos. Chimeras are primarily split down the middle. So you'll see like a straight line and you'll, it's almost like yin and yang as, as far as the way that you'll see it. And mosaics um, sometimes are a little harder to spot, but you'll see two phenotypes built into one. Commonly when you see mosaics, you will notice a lot of things like one side of their gills is longer than the other, one of their legs are longer than the other, and those are just from the different rates of the phenotypes growing. One thing that makes the mosaic very special is you can't breed for a mosaic. So it's just kind of like a rare anomaly that happens, and it's not something that if you take a mosaic if it even has the ability to breed because a lot of times mosaics don't possess the ability to reproduce but if they did and you were to reproduce it that does not mean that its offspring is going to be mosaic it's just a random anomaly that happens in the genetics next let's talk about the newest morph in the axolotl community the hypopigmented axolotls they're going to be more commonly known as hypomelanistic these are axolotls that have melanophores but lack the ability to produce melanin. They're commonly confused with leucistics, but hypos typically have a more pale or gray color to them than the white that leucistics do. And they can also show their xanthophores in yellow patches along the dorsal of their body that can get um, more noticeable as they age. They do also retain iridophores, but the cool thing about hypos is, is they've been combined with other morphs and have produced new morphs like the hypomelanistic copper and the hypomelanistic melanoid. Wait, 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 wait. So you're telling me that they produce melanin, but they don't show melanin? Exactly. We just learned that melanoids is the increased production of melanin and hypos is the lack of production of melanin. So that sounds like it shouldn't exist, right? Well, it does. 
And that's what makes our friend Locks here so special. We can tell that he's a hypomelanistic melanoid because he lacks the ring in his eye that we described in um, melanoids previously. Only a few breeders have been able to produce hypomelanistic melanoids, and that is Rufus Aquatics, Rainy Day Aquatics, and our good friends at Axolotl Planet, which is where we got this guy. When it comes to Lox, that's not all. He has one special characteristic. He also has the green fluorescent protein that makes them glow in the dark. And how this came about is scientists took this from a jellyfish and incorporated it into axolotls for research. And that has then made its way into the breeding community. And with all of this being said, that makes blocks here one of only two known or at least discovered at the time or that has been put forth uh, axolotls because he's a hypomelanistic melanoid and then he also has GFP. The other one is at one of our good friends Drew at Axolotl Planet. Uh, so he's the only other person that I know of or that we know of that has one at the moment. I'm not saying that more don't exist but at this time of making this video we just don't know of any other ones. That about covers all of the morphs that are currently known in the axolotl market. Keep in mind, this is a relatively new community. I mean, GFP was only introduced in 2006, so those are just now coming about. The hypo um, melanoids just came about, what, a couple of years ago? So there is a lot to learn and we're constantly educating ourselves. If you have anything that you want to add to any of these morphs or any morphs you would like us to, to talk about, to go over, or just want to have a discussion at all, please comment down below. As I said, we always love learning more and educating ourselves, so. All right, uh, it was fun time spending our day with you guys going over axolotls. Uh, we love axolotls. And so if you want us to do any other videos, go ahead and comment down below, give us a like, share us, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace. Bye.